Welcome back to my animal education series. So today we're going to talk about some of my neighbors, but not the human kinds, those ones aren't as cool. But today we're talking about anoles. And if you like lizards as much as me, then you're going to really love these guys. Behind me here I have a Cuban night anole, which is not at all what we're talking about today. Only uh, similarity is that it, it's an anole. But today we're talking about two of the anole species that I see all over the place now that I moved down to Florida. And that is the native green anole that can be found from the Carolinas and Florida all the way as far west as Texas. And then the invasive brown anole, also known as the Cuban brown anole. And they are originally from Cuba and the Bahamas and they have made their way to the United States. And they are occupy generally the same areas as the green anole as well as Southern California. These anoles look very similar to each other and I was not able to get any of my own close-ups but we found some pictures online to help you guys see the differences in between the two. So we just took these from the internet so I want to give credit to where credit is due. So thank you to Mr. Bernard Spraggs from New Zealand. Uh, we have his photo from the brown anole or of the brown anole and astrogeeb.com we got a picture of the green anole from them. And actually as we were talking about anoles we have this little really young anole that hatched out pretty recently. It's only about this big climbing up the cord to the big anole cage. As you can see in these pictures here, the green anole has a much longer and more narrow snout than the brown anole which has a much shorter and stubby snout. And the green anole has a more flatter, more flat, it has a flatter head than the brown anole. And the brown anole also has distinct ridges above the eyes. Both of the anoles have dewlaps and this may not be true everywhere, but at least in my area, the green anole has more of a pinkish reddish dewlap and then the brown anole has more of an orangish color on their dewlap. And these anoles can actually change colors too. Typically when we see the green anoles around the yard, they are a very vibrant green color, but we have seen them jump out of trees or bushes and then hit the ground and turn brown very quickly. It's probably to better camouflage with the leaf litter versus the trees that are higher up. And the brain, not the brain, the brown anoles will do the same thing. Except they don't change from green to brown, they just change from light to a darker brown or vice versa. Typically the more dominant anoles will be the darker brown and the juveniles will be the lighter brown to better suit the leaf litter and the bushes that are lower to the ground. I wasn't able to find any sources that say for sure how the brown anole ended up in the United States, but these animals aren't very big, only about this big, maybe the biggest brown anole that I've seen. I've seen a couple of bigger ones, but generally about like six inches long. But a lizard of that size can be anywhere. They can hit hitch a ride on any boat, plane, float some tropical plants, fruits and vegetables that are brought to the states. It could be anything. They're, they're not very big. But it doesn't matter how they really get it up here. These guys are so plentiful. They're all over the place. that I'm pretty sure these anoles are here to stay. These anoles, like all lizards, have to thermoregulate themselves to maintain their body temperature. Here is actually a really good video of a brown anole changing from a dark brown to an almost black color to absorb the morning sun's warmth. Each morning, my dad and I will both see these brown anoles hanging out on lawn furniture and on bushes and next to the door here on the screened-in patio that we have. And the green anoles will typically be on the side of the house where it's facing the sun. And now these lizards are great neighbors because their primary food item is insects, which means that they will help rid your yard of mosquitoes, beetles, creepy crawlies, and other things like that. These brown anoles appear to be pretty resilient little creatures to withstand uh, the southern United States' winters. And it may sound like it's warm all the time in Florida, but I'm up in the panhandle and we get down to sometimes the 40s or the high 30s in the winter. So it's not exactly sunshine and rainbows all year round. But these guys can handle these winters just fine. And researchers have found that these little anoles are actually breeding quicker than the green anoles and they are typically more aggressive than the green anoles. Which, actually in my personal experience, the green anoles are always more aggressive to me than the brown ones. Maybe the areas around the Destin area are just weird, I'm not sure. But overall researchers have said that the brown anoles are more aggressive than the green ones. And since they are breeding more quickly and they're more aggressive, they're typically competing directly with the green anoles for space and bushes and for prey and food and things like that. But researchers also discovered that the behaviors of the green anole have changed since the arrival of the brown anole. Typically the brown anoles will stay low to the ground on 
well, on the ground, low bushes and shrubs like that, while the green anoles will be higher up at bushes and trees. Due to the green anoles' very vibrant green color, these animals are very common in the pet trade. And actually, when I first started keeping reptiles, I had a couple green anoles myself. And I, I really like them, but as most small animals uh, are, they don't live very long. And typically, when you buy anoles, they're already adults when you buy them. So their lifespan in your home, at least, is pretty short. But as we talk about predation a lot on this channel, I'm going to keep the cycle going with this video here. So these guys will actually eat the young of the other species, or sometimes their own, pretty common um, amongst these guys. And they also fall prey to a lot of animals being so small, like birds, larger lizards, snakes, and domestic cats are just some of the animals that will eat these guys. Even though the brown anole is technically an invasive species, I really do enjoy seeing these lizards around the house, along with the green anole. Back when I was in Illinois, we didn't have a whole lot of lizards that were running around the house and the yard pretty frequently. And back when I lived in Virginia, we had a bunch of skinks and fence lizards that would run around. And we had the five line skinks, and those are super cool because of the, obviously the five lines. And the really bright blue tail that they had, that just sometimes purple. I just thought that was super cool, and I get to see them again down here as well. But today we're not talking about skinks, we're talking about anoles. And if you guys want to help out the green anoles maintain a stronger presence in the southeastern United States, then in your yard, of course, if you live in the areas where they are found, then you can plant larger shrubs and trees in your yard to help attract the insects that these anoles are going to eat. And if you're moving from the southeastern part of the United States to another warmer area of the country, make sure you check any plants or anything that was stored outside for any brown anoles so that they don't hitch ride with you to wherever you guys may be going. So again, thank you guys so much for watching this week's episode. Don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below. Subscribe to my channel. And as always, I'll see you next week.